Welcome to our Fed Talks Thought Leadership interview series. I'm Billy Mitchell, editor in chief of Fed Scoop and Defense Scoop, and it's my pleasure to be joined today by John Sherman, CIO of the Department of Defense. Mr. Sherman, as we record this, China is increasing its military activity in and around Taiwan, and Russia is continuing its operations in Ukraine. This return to great power competition after more than 20 years of counterterrorism and counterinsurgency has significant implications for the department. With that in mind, what are your top priorities in the next one to two years to improve the security and protection of DOD's data and networks? My top priorities, Billy, and first of all, thank you for having me here today. My top priorities are really cybersecurity first and foremost, in the sort of environment and against the pacing challenges we're facing, particularly China, but others too, to ensure our systems, data, and everything else and our weapon systems are secure as possible is among my very top priorities. Also providing very modern enterprise cloud computing through the Joint Warfighting Cloud Capability, or JWCC, undergirded by our software modernization strategy and implementation plan is also critical. Protecting the defense industrial base is also very critical in this activity as well, ensuring that our 300,000 companies that support the United States military have the best protection they can. And very importantly for our command control and communications, our C3, whether it's positioning, navigation, and timing, whether it's SATCOM, whether it's electromagnetic spectrum operations, and many other areas that are going to be so important operating in a contested environment, whether it's over the Western Pacific or Central Europe or anywhere else, ensuring we have the very best capability is a top priority for me. Mr. Sherman, you mentioned how the department is focused on getting enterprise cloud capabilities right and making them available to warfighters as soon as possible. Why is this so important in light of some of the service cloud offerings and other programs, and what benefits do you expect it to provide that you can, can't provide with existing programs? I'm very grateful for what the services have done with their fit for purpose clouds, whether it's Cloud Army, whether it's Black Pearl, Cloud One in the Air Force, and others, Stratus up at DISA. But what Joint Warfighting Cloud capability, a multi-cloud, multi-vendor, enterprise-level cloud at all three security fabrics to include top secret from CONUS out to the tactical edge is something we don't have right now. It will be a key pillar of Joint All Domain Command and Control, or JADC2, and it's going to be critical to connect the combatant commands and to be able to provide that JADC2 capability. We frankly have not had anything like this before, but again, I must be very grateful to the services for blazing a path on this and by by the way, to our intelligence community partners for showing us how to do enterprise cloud at this scale as well. And as we close out, Mr. Sherman, how is DOD attempting to speed up digital modernization efforts and address the problem of technical debt? Does industry have a role in helping accelerate the pace of innovation and fielding these new capabilities? Getting after technical debt means we've been fighting in the desert and mountains for 20 years against insurgents, terrorists, and other violent extremists. Now as we get ready to stare down potential state actors, we have to think differently about securing our weapon systems, networks, and other capabilities. This takes a team of teams effort working with others like Acquisition and Sustainment and DOD, the Joint Staff J6, NSA providing us a threat intelligence, Principal Cyber Advisor, and then also very importantly the services that have the program offices overseeing our weapon systems to go system by system if necessary to ensure we're able to make them as cyber safe as possible, not only from kinetic threats, but cyber attacks that could cripple or spoof or harm our weapon system, weapon systems. And industry absolutely has a role in this as we move to areas like zero trust, as we deploy new types of cyber security against a very dynamic, potential set of adversaries that are never sitting still in this space. And I'll end with this, that our tech sector is our national advantage to be able to work closely with government and DOD. Mr. Sherman, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Billy.